Jacob Zuma Foundation has, input to, uh, has dismissed findings of the State Capture Commission, especially as far as it touches on the former president and his relationship with the Guptas. Jacob Zuma Foundation spokesperson Mzwanele Manyi has hit out at Judge President uh, Raymond Zonder, who chaired the State Capture Inquiry, saying he was unworthy to be a judge, and that was just the start. Mzwanele Manyi joins us now with more. Very good afternoon to you. Thank you for your time. You unleashed a turret of grievances against Chief Justice Raymond Zonder while outlining the former president's qualms, essentially making it clear that uh, pre former President Zuma does not believe he's done anything wrong, but was more the victim of a flawed process. Talk to us about that. Yeah, thank you very much. I think that's an excellent summary. Um, look, firstly, we also deal, let, let's deal firstly with the conduct of Judge Zuma, just to show that the man is uh, very far from being what is should be considered a worthy judge. It is in the codes of ethics of all judges that a few things should not happen if you're a judge. One of them is to dabble into political arena, as it were. Now, this judge is on record praising Ramaphosa for winning over and desert and all of that, and making all kinds of statements that basically impugn uh, uh, Dr. Nkosa's and Azuma action, because he says if it was not for Ramaphosa's win, maybe a uh, treasury would have been invaded even more and all of that. And yet, you know, he knows that... Uh, uh, somebody else would have come in if it was not Ramaphosa, it would have been Kosa and Azuma. So he just makes all these kinds of outlandish statements. And that's not all. He then also doubles into, I mean, this guy said he hasn't got time to finish the report, but somehow he finds time to go into all kinds of things, electoral things and uh, systems and all of that, and starts to say that uh, uh, maybe you don't want a party system uh, maybe party system is not preferable, maybe we should have a, a just a direct election of a president and all of that. And why is he listening to that? Then again, he makes a value judgment on a person, and he says, well, the risk for that, you might get a person of a President Zuma character, a character which he despises, and all of that. And, and by default, actually insulting the choices of the nation, uh, because President Zuma has been a president of uh, South Africa for two successive terms with huge uh, 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 margins, as it were. So basically even insulting those that, uh, that voted for President Zuma. But importantly, he goes further again to break the, the cardinal issue around being a judge. It cannot be that we have a judge that uh, will just uh, flagrantly uh, violate the, the code of ethics, which say, uh, apart from the political things, which is also in the code, but also to comment on matters that are pending before courts. For him to go and talk about the issue of Arthur Fraser uh, and, and, and the whole parole thing. On the 15th of August, we are in court uh, on the same matter. So basically for us as a foundation, we see this judge as sending a coded message to the SCA uh, that uh, you must find uh, against the... Uh, uh, Arthur Fraser's uh, decision, uh, as it were. This is because this man is, just, is, is so vengeful. In other words, he is still angry that uh, President Zuma did not spend 15 months in jail as he had ordered uh, to do so, you know. But the bottom line here is that the matter is pending before courts and he's got no business uh, to be dabbling with those matters. So, indeed, uh, he's being taken to the uh, JSC. Okay, uh, so, so uh, Mr. Manyi, the report also found that uh, the ANC under former President uh, Jacob Zuma had, um, had, had of course, uh, permitted, supported, and enabled corruption and state capture. As you read out your statement, you accused the toothless inquiry of investigating a phantom thing called state capture. Knowing what you know, South Africans know today about the impact of state capture, do you think describing state capture in that manner is responsible? Oh, yeah, most definitely, especially if you're looking for something that uh, is, it, 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 the definition goes from here to there. There's no, I mean, if I were to ask you right now here uh, to say what is, the, what is your understanding of, of state capture, not sure what uh, answer I will give you. The bottom line is that in the first instance, the setting up of this, co of this uh, commission was wrong from the beginning. It violated the Constitution, uh, Section 84, 
of the constitution of the constitution because the only person with the power to appoint a commission is the president there is no law in this country that allows for the kind of thing that has happened where a chief justice uh, selects a judge on behalf of the president and say you must just sign under on the dotted line here this is the choice the the recommendation by Tulima Tonsela was wrong I know that uh, President Zuma took the matter on review and Dustin Mlambo when he ruled on the matter uh, against President Zuma he did not cite any 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 law uh, on this thing he did not cite any constitution any any law anything they just used their own a, a biased reasoning uh, to uh, to do this. It is a pity that uh, uh, when the uh, sixth administration came in, they did not appeal um, Lambo's decision. But bottom line is that this commission in the first place is a commission uh, that was set up on a wrong legal basis. It was wrong. It cannot be that we have the Supreme Court, the Supreme Law of the land that dictates how this should happen. And then you find people that find creativity around this to avoid what the, uh, 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 what, the, what the Constitution is saying. Now, yesterday, I challenged the journalists there who were laboring under this uh, impression that says capture and all of this and the Zuma captured and all of that. I asked them to give me evidence, even you for right now, if you've got any evidence uh, that you've seen that report that implicates President Zuma, please bring it on. Uh, let's, let's, let's deal with that because that report is just full of innuendo, gossip. He said, I said, he said, I said, and all of that. Uh, it's not, it's, it's really uh, not worth even the paper is written on that thing. It's got so much smearing of people, heavily investigated things, uh, and all of that. Nothing concrete uh, uh, with this thing. This is why everybody is actually up in arms. Uh, I've counted at least three or four people that are going to review this report because it is really shambolic. So, uh, so Mr. Mani, ir report. irrespective of the alleged, uh, you know, flawed processes, alleged uh, flawed recommendations or alleged bias, do you then think, had it been a different judge and, and not Justice Zondo, that the outcome would have been any different, that the um, linkages to state capture and the former president would not be in existence? Yeah, I think had it been a different judge uh, that was doing this thing, there would be a different thing. First thing that would have happened is that President Ramaphosa would have been uh, red carded for perjury. President Ramaphosa, he went to that commission and he said that uh, the Deployment Committee of the ANC uh, does not get itself involved in the appointment of judges. Later, the DA found the, 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 the evidence to the contrary. They found minutes uh, of that thing, of that... Uh, of the deployment committee, and they found that uh, ANC people were briefed to support certain judges as it were. Now, that on its own should have been enough for Judge Zondo to say, or for any sober judge to say that uh, Ramaphosa pleasured himself because clearly that is a clear lie. Number one. Number two, if, the, if, if, if somebody that was there was a proper judge, it cannot be that you say, uh, you don't know who the donors of the CR-17 campaign were when you were going into the dinners and all of that. Everybody knows that if you are the guest speaker, you are the main guy at the dinner, you sit with the, with the big sponsors, as it were. Now for Ram and, and by the way, this is not hidden. Even in the venue, the thing gets branded and all of that by the, by the main sponsor. Now to come back here and just lie plainly in the commission and say and, 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 and pretend as if you are just some doll you, you, don't know, you don't know anything. Uh, you just say, no, I don't know. I was just coming in. I came in and spoke. I came in and ate. Uh, and that's it. I didn't know who the, who the two nurses are. a plain lie. Now, if you had a judge that is a, a, a proper judge, you would have picked that up and would have dealt with it. But you've got this judge here that uh, is, uh, 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 in fact, he, he is so biased. In fact, one could argue that... Uh, it could be that uh, there's, a, there's a theory going around that, in fact, he let Ramaphosa off the hook because he wanted to be appointed chief justice. But, and this but, is corroborated Mr. by the My way. question is, is about uh, former President Jacob Zuma. Would any of the information that we now know today um, have been any different were it be a different judge? Because we know that in the previous uh, reports, the former president's name appears more than 100 times. 
how could a personal matter now dissolve the alleged criminal conduct that occurred, um, the, the, the criminal conduct that's mentioned in the reports? I mean, surely it wouldn't go away. It would still be the same. It would just be presented by a different judge. Let me perhaps in closing ask you this. How would you respond to critics who may say this is uh, another uh, part of a series of Stalingrad attacks against Zondo and the Commission? I've asked you to give me evidence. We haven't started giving me evidence. I asked the journalist yesterday to give me evidence of your kind of posture, and uh, no one could give me evidence. This is the thing. I'm sitting here. I'm dealing with you on gossip. All these things that you're talking about, it's just pure gossip, hearsay, and all of that. Nobody has put anything credible on the table to say this is what President Zuma has done. Absolutely no one. No one has done this. It's all talk, 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 innuendo, conjecture, and all of this. Nothing has been put on the table uh, to substantiate your, your kind of posture. And I'm, asking, and I'm challenging you right now as you speak. Maybe get your editor to whisper something into, the, into your ear and tell you what is it that President Zuma has done that is corroborated. There isn't. It's just lies and lies and gossip and all of that. That's all we have. Very well. Let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Um, that is the Jacob Zuma Foundation spokesperson, Mr. Zwanele Mani, speaking, of course, in response to the final installment of the state capture report, saying that it's all based on lies and gossip.